Hello YouTubers and all those who happen to watch, hope you guys are all doing quite well. Uh, this is going to be showing off a little bit of Witch and Hero, something I am currently, you know, just playing through. So, alright, going to uh, go back into the game here. Now, this is put on the Nintendo eShop, so generally I'm assuming that this is available for multiple platforms. Not 100% sure, don't know. And uh, what this game is like is sort of like a tower defense, where you have to defend the witch. It's similar to the princess in the hero game. There are the princess and knight. I can't remember exactly what the game is called, but uh, one thing to note, it is basically not touchscreenable, which is not a big deal. As you can see right there, it's pretty much operated with your central circle and directional pad, as well as... There's really no controls other than pressing this button right there, which is to access the shop, which you use the shop to upgrade your character just to make them stronger. Now, every time you upgrade them, you'll notice a slight difference in strength with their attacks, their speed, their defense will be able to take more hits. This, of course, is a projectile which shoots forward at first and opens into a spread shot. Uh, this I have no clue what the hell does yet once it's at level 7, so we will find out together, <laughs> I guess. So, alright, we'll go into 7 here. Gameplay is really easy. Think of East when it comes to the East 1 combat. You just attack enemies from the side or from behind to uh, exterminate them. You can hit them head on, but it will hurt you or it will hurt them. Bounce into chess. See, you gotta defend her, which I'm not doing a very good job because I'm talking and not paying attention. Now, after a while, you have to give her blood, which the blood is actually used to restore her temporarily to allow her to do a AoE attack or whatever. Very easy pickup to play game. And then you generally do that, enemies die. I'm doing a very bad job at defending her because I'm talking way too much, repeating myself, but you get the general concept. Get in there behind, get some good damage in. Control with the uh, left and right bumper or shoulder pad buttons. This allows you to execute her to turn left and right. I'm waiting for a moment, abiding my time accordingly. There we go. And whatever leftover blood you have, it actually carries over as a diminishing return, so to speak, so you actually get more back. So you can be able to and if you get hurt, you don't die. Or if you get knocked down, you just get very stunned. Which adds this really tense atmosphere. Which you see why the, uh, you have to be really quick in this game, otherwise you're gonna get, uh, rocked, so to speak. Generally defend the witch as she's wailing on the enemies. And you can kill the boss yourself, but not advisable. <laughs> Especially like this, because it gets really hellish. You collect the uh, gold and you pretty much end the round. And uh, after each round, you get a tally, which is uh, experience points, which is this green dot. And you get the coins, which are used to upgrade your tunes here. You do level up in this game, so your characters uh, haven't noticed any substantial importance to the leveling up other than, you know, just that. So, I'm not 100% sure what the hell leveling up essentially does, other than feeling accomplishment, I suppose. So, at the top, again, tells you how much money you have in the shop, so we're just going to upgrade this, this ability right here, which the wind, so far, it does an AoE attack, but the AoE attack isn't quite uh, anything essential. So, let's 
see. We will upgrade it for fun and see what the hell it does. <laughs> Once it's upgraded to that uh, tier, of course. Again, it's a really easy pick-up-to-play game. You just press a couple buttons, and that's it. I mean, you press the X button to swap over her magic spells. You use the left and right to aim those spells. So it's a really easy-to-understand concept, really. It's, it's not going to cause any confusion, except to that last part. Yeah, so initially, these spells don't really... Wind spell doesn't really do too much. Seems like it's kind of useless. You get potions there to actually recover your HP, so it isn't like you're screwed. So next you go like this, feed your... You can switch it on the fly, which spells she uses. Again, the rounds don't last too long, so it isn't a big long grind. At least not have I noticed. It's also very strategic as well in this game, where you use your blood just right. You accumulate just right enough blood, you'd be able to do vicious things. Circle the or swirl the circle button, and it'll allow you to recover. Go over here, swirl around to the boss. Have her whale on the boss for a while. And the round as quickly as possible, because you don't want to... There you go. Becomes very hectic after a while. It's simple, but easy fun, really. I mean, after a while, it does get challenging, so it's really an incentive to level up your things here. So it requires you to go back through previous stages to do so, because it's more advisable to do that, so you can have an easier grind session. So you can just go thoop, thoop, because the stronger you get, it's easier just to clear your enemies, and the more EXP you'll gain. So at least like a level or two behind the initial level you're having trouble with if you do come across that trouble. Which some people probably won't. They have some sort of crazy magical fingers that somehow can overcome substational odds. So next we want to upgrade that. Hit like a truck. And drive like a Ferrari. a lot of focus so far, I noticed, in the sword, which is, I guess, for good reason. So that way, eventually, these enemies get hit, killed with one shot, which is very good, because it helps a farming process a lot quicker. See? Now these sharks go down in one shot, which is at level 9. Really good pastime as well, like you can actually probably, I wouldn't say complete this game, but it definitely gives you a sensational element of playing through this. It gives you, you know, save files, so you can actually, you know, progress, and if you're fixed for time, you can easily just exit out of the round and just go and do whatever you have to do, or close your 3DS, that probably work excellent too. Sorry if the 3DS is getting moved around too much. No, I best I can do. Notice the fire is the only one that really does any useful damage. I'm guessing the wind, I'm just going to assume this, not sure. 
it probably slows the enemies down, for all I know. Again, that's just a rough, wild guess. <laughs> I guess another good strategy too is with that box bouncing around, if you can hit just right and knock it into her, or knock yourself into her, you can actually replenish her HP a lot quicker, or get to her a lot quicker, I noticed. Okay, I'm just pulling my fingers, getting the job done. Definitely a fun and addictive game. Yeah, I didn't need that bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, that is Witch and Hero on the 3DS. It's pretty decent. I mean, it's it's a very decent uh, game where you can just sit down and play the fuck out of it and grind out and waste some time while you're waiting for a doctor's appointment or something of that nature. So. Yeah, that's all the gameplay for now. Uh, more video gameplay soon.